this is getting no attention, but it's one of the best things I've seen in corporate media. Want to know why? Because it was Chris Hedges. Chris Hedges, a uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, has been banned from, pub from uh, corporate media for years. Tara May starting the party with $2 in the Super Chats. More where this came from if you, if you name outlets. Tara May, let me tell you, and I'm mad at you, Tara May, because now you've gotten me in the mood for tiramisu. I don't know why, but I read Tara May, and now I want tiramisu. Let me tell you something, Tara May. There is a story that will be coming out very soon, very soon. Um, it's a massive story. It has policy implications and criminal implications. It's a story Jen and I have been working on for several months. And when that story comes out, and we have reason to think it will come out next month, October, we're talking. Uh, oh, I will be naming outlets that stopped it from coming out. I'm not here to make friends in the corporate media. I will go against the corporate media when I have to. Even if that burns some bridges, I'll burn the bridge. Because I will always be honest with the audience, because that is how you get real loyalty. That is how you prove to people, you and your colleagues, which will be at status quo, are the real deal. So I will be naming names that have stopped this story from coming out. So you see it. You wait. And thank you for the $2 in Super Chat. And if you're not feeling super today, you can become a Patreon. You could also contribute at paypal.me slash status coup. The links are on the bottom of the screen. Chris Hedges, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, has been banned from corporate media for some time, writes about the empire, writes about the US empire, the oligarchy, all these things. MSNBC must have been running low on hacks and puppets and democratic establishment uh, over Labor Day weekend because they invited Chris Hedges on. I want to watch this interview with you because I think it's so telling. I think it's so telling. And I'll, uh, I'm going to stop and start it as we go. President Trump is the symptom of what's wrong and not the disease. It's called America, the Farewell Tour. Joining me now, author Chris Hedges, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and also host of On Contact, a show on Russian TV and network funded by the Russian government. Chris, thanks for your time. Let's start with his, with this. Uh, you got to stop it already. You're going to get mad at me because I'm going to keep starting to stop it. You notice that they had to say funded by the Russian government. MSNBC can't miss a beat on the McCarthyism. Funded by the Russian government. If we're keeping it real, neither could YouTube. All the RT videos, they got a little thing under, funded by the US government, uh, funded by the Russian government. Uh, for CNN's channel, for MSNBC's channel, do they say CNN, MSNBC, which have lobbyists that, that lobby the parent companies for those networks, lobby the federal government for tax cuts and deregulation and subsidies. Is that in there on YouTube? Didn't think so. I continue. You know, your, your provocative claims here, including that the country is facing the inevitable collapse of the American empire. So how do you back that up and what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, we've extended ourselves militarily uh, 17 years now of warfare uh, into conflicts that are futile, that we're not going to win, uh, exhausting trillions of dollars while the country is being hollowed out from the inside, not only in terms of deindustrialization, but austerity, and the orchestration of the largest wealth inequality in American history. And you can't maintain a democracy in an oligarchic system, and that goes all the way back to philosophers such as Aristotle. Uh, and the book focuses on the kinds of pathologies that are exhibited by a society in deep decay, uh, the opioid crisis, gambling, uh, sexual sadism, suicide, uh, which are plaguing larger and larger segments of the country and I think have political consequences. Mm. This kind of stagnation, as you pointed out, creates figures like Trump. And I covered the war in the former Yugoslavia. I was the Balkan bureau chief for the New York Times. And I watched the economic collapse of Yugoslavia vomit up figures like Radovan Karadzic and Slobodan Milosevic. So we have to address uh, this social inequality, this, this dislocation, this alienation, what Durkheim, the sociologist, calls this anomie, uh, or our problems are not going to go away, even with the impeachment of Trump. First of all, let me, let me tell you, because I worked at Fox News for a dark period in my life, and I worked at MSNBC. I've sat in control rooms. I know how these things work. She had a producer in her ear 
move on, move on, move on. Why? Because he was talking about income inequality, he was talking about social inequality, he was talking about American empire, oligarchy, and they were screaming in her ear, move on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next. Do you see, did the anchor ask a follow-up question about his literally reporting the facts on the record income inequality? Did the anchor ask a follow-up? Well, expand. What do you mean by the social inequality? That's interesting. What do you mean? Did the anchor ask a question about the endless wars we're at? Was there any follow-up on that? No. She was like a, a, an excited puppy when you take her to the door, when you take the puppy to the dog park, as soon as he mentioned Trump, oh my God, she followed up with a Trump question and on McCain and Trump, McCain and Trump. So yeah, you're inviting somebody on whose book is really about income inequality, uh, the future demise of the American empire because uh, countries with this level of income inequality can't continue to be democracies. But the anchor, simply moves on to Trump. Let's play some more. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when it comes to the political ramifications and it too, Chris, because at a larger scope, yes, this is uh, what you're touching on in your book. But here, in this word where we're talking about, uh, you know, the John McCain funeral, the words coming out of it, President Trump in here too, racism that's happening uh, in Florida when it comes to the governor's race there and that tone in this day and age, basically when it comes to the past week, um, it, it, talk about the political ramifications of it in that sense. Well, you saw with the McCain funeral really at its core an appeal for civility, uh, for a return to uh, a political discourse uh, grounded in mutual respect. And uh, of course, this is what's hap This is what demagogues. This is how demagogues speak. They speak in, in vulgarities uh, the way Trump does. Uh, they belittle others, and particularly the vulnerable, the weak. Uh, they uh, are consumed by this kind of narcissism. Everything in the world is seen through the lens of what's either good for them or what isn't good for them. Who is loyal to them and who isn't. Uh, and I found that kind of poignant with the McCain funeral mm -hmm. uh, because this is the new world. Uh, and as you correctly point out, it's not limited to Trump. Uh, there are all sorts of Trump uh, mini-me's uh, in Florida and everywhere else uh, who have descended into this kind of gutter talk uh, and, uh, and, and appeals to uh, racism and Islamophobia and homophobia. Uh, and it's not just the United States. This is what neoliberalism has writ large, what corporate capitalism has writ large throughout much of the industrialized world. We just saw in a German city 8,000 uh, uh, marchers led by neo-Nazis uh, walking through the streets. We've seen Hungary with Orban, uh, Brexit, uh, the rise of Boris Johnson, figures well, like Boris Johnson. So it's not limited to the United States. Sure. And if you take history, though, in, in essence, a history of this country, and you look at its past, and you look at the darker moments, and you look at the challenges, civil unrest uh, in the 60s, Vietnam War, and we can go on a list here, um, we've seen it through. We've come out of it. And who's not to say that that couldn't be the same when it comes to this time now? Wait a minute. Who's come out of it? Who's come out of it? Have you come out? Have you come out of the financial crash? Have you come out okay of the financial crash? Have you come out okay of all these wars and all the money you as a taxpayer are spending? Have you come out okay of deindustrialization and sending all these jobs through trade deals to China and Mexico? Who's come out okay in America? Certainly not black people, certainly, certainly not veterans who fought these fucking idiotic wars in Vietnam and Iraq. Who's come out okay? I continue, or Chris Hedges, excuse, uh, excuse me, Chris Hedges continues. Why it seems like if you see it as bleak, are we gonna stay bleak? Well, because the foundation of the American economy is no longer manufacturing. Uh, it, it, our economy has been seized by uh, Wall Street speculators. So you think econ the economy is be behind it all? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, there was an article in today's New York Times about uh, the fracking industry being the next bubble. Well, we've got student right. debt. We've got the economy is extremely weak. Uh, okay. and I want you to really pay attention to this part because this was the most telling part. Really pay attention to what to her. Pay attention to what he's saying and then pay attention to how she reacts. So you think econ the economy is be behind it all? Yeah, sure. I mean, there was an article in today's New York Times about uh, the fracking industry being the next bubble. Well, we've got student right. debt. We've got the economy is extremely weak. Uh, and you saw with the tax cuts, uh, these major corporations went and bought back their own stock. Uh, so because their compensation packages are tied to stock or they hoarded it, they didn't invest it into the country. They didn't create jobs. Uh, and this is what Karl Marx calls fictitious capital. And, and we all know where it's going to end. Uh, and another economic crisis, okay. there's no plan B. They're, they can't lower interest rates any more right. than they've already lowered them. Chris Hedges, thank you for your time and perspective. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, you cannot make this shit up. Whenever in that interview, at any point in that interview, it wasn't like obnoxious cutting off, like, like Bill O'Reilly or, or Chris Matthews, like talking over the person. It was the subtle, oh, okay, oh, all right, uh, okay, uh, all right. Like trying to get him to stop talking so she could interject. But why? Did you notice that she did not interject at any point when Chris Hedges was talking about Trump and the racism and the gutter talk? Oh no, that's allowed. That's allowed on MSNBC. That's allowed on CNN. And guys, let's share this video because we're now at 1.30. Uh, and this is the, you know, this is a super chat. And let's get these numbers up. Share the video. If you can, uh, leave a few bucks. Again, we're launching the GoFundMe on Monday, uh, next week. That is a, if I were to teach a class on corporate media and its horrendous effects on democracy and public information and the public's right to know, that would be one class, probably the first, because that is a, they had a guest on that they almost never have on because they don't want those facts to be on their air. They don't want facts about fracking to be on corporate media air. They don't want facts about the total unsustainable income inequality we have on this uh, we have in this country that is unparalleled in most countries around the world and they don't want it to be known that at a certain point uh, the proletariat's going to revolt now let me be specific i'm not talking about violence but at a certain point people have breaking points and you're going to have real real protests in this country i'm not talking about protests on a saturday against guns I'm talking about people in the, in the streets at some point. Every single time, every single time, Chris Hedges started shifting the income inequality or economic oppression or the oligarchy, she kept interjecting, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'm not making fun of this particular anchor because it would have been the same way with anyone, man or woman. If you're a corporate anchor, they would have known we can't have these things said on our airwaves. Income, income inequality is a talking point that we'll talk about maybe bi-yearly on MSNBC or CNN, but we don't actually allow it. We don't actually allow it, like as a, as a thought. We don't allow them to actually expand. You want to know why? Who is NBC and MSNBC owned by? Comcast. What does Comcast do? They were the leading force behind net neutrality. What does Comcast do? They have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to lobby Congress for tax cuts and deregulation. Gee, I wonder why they didn't cover Bernie Sanders on NBC and MSNBC. Lori, thanks for the five bucks. Love you covering Hedges, who somehow ended up on the MSNBC CIA. Lori, I should pay you five bucks. I love that. MSNBC CIA, I'm going to use that and actually got a few words of truth in their corporatist airways. I was shocked. They must have had se several cancellations on Labor Day weekend, because that was Labor Day weekend, and the choice was we go dark 
or we bring in this raving lunatic socialist. So they went with, well, we can't go dark. Call, call Chris Hedges. I love Chris Hedges. I, I, there are very few journalists I respect uh, in, in the media, and he's one of them. He's done some amazing work reporting from war zones. He, put, he, he has a right, and he knows what he's talking about, and he has a right to say it. And you can find him. He does columns, I believe, at Truth Dig. I love Chris Hedges. I'd love to interview him, too.